We start with President Obama's speech today. Gene Sperling is the director of the White House's National Economic Council. Gene, it's great to have you on. Let me focus for just a minute or two on what most of the people watching really care about, and then we'll get to what the president talked about and the Republicans are fighting about today. The main question I have is, a while back in the first year of this administration, Christine Romer, the economic advisor to the president, said, we're going to have the unemployment rate down to 8%. Is that an achievable target before the next election? Will you reach it? Well, there's no question we learned uh, after we took office that we had a much deeper recession. Everybody did. And that's made uh, given us a tougher hole to dig out. But I think what we've seen is we've seen the president take the necessary emergency efforts to prevent us from going into a Great Depression. We're seeing the economy start to recover now. We're seeing strong job growth, private sector job growth at 200000 a month. And what you're seeing today is the president saying that part of okay. that economic growth strategy has to be a comprehensive deficit reduction plan that's done in a way that okay. will not inhibit this recovery but strengthen it. Uh, this program's a political show, Gene, as you know well. It's hardball. And I want an answer to the question, will we get below 8 percent by the time the voters go to the polls next November? You know, I'm not going to make projections. I think that we're making more progress than anyone could have thought. We're at 9.8 percent. Uh, the drop to 8.8 percent in three or four months is one of the largest drops we've ever seen. So we're hopeful. But I'm, we're going to worry less about making projections and more about doing the right economic okay. policy and keeping our focus on job growth. Okay. And that's why things like the payroll tax cut that the president passed uh, are, are very important and are helping this recovery right now. Let's talk about the president today. Here he is, the president. Let's listen to the president. You interpret. Here he is uh, making his case for why the rich should pay more in taxes. I thought it was fascinating. Let's listen. So here's the truth. Around two-thirds of our budget, two-thirds, is spent on Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and National Security. Two-thirds. Programs like unemployment insurance, student loans, veterans' benefits, and tax credits for working families take up another 20 percent. What's left after interest on the debt is just 12 percent for everything else. You know, that sounds like a heavy lift, Gene, for the president to ever get near anybody balancing a budget or even getting close back to what we used to think was sort of a normal balance in spending and taxes. Um, what are we going to do about it? It seems like the American people don't want to give up a big defense budget. They don't want to give up Medicare. They don't, really don't want to give up Social Security. They don't want to give up Medicaid even. What can we really cut? Well, I think you should look at what the president put forward today. His message was, as you said, there are no easy choices. If we're going to bring down the deficit in a way that allows us to still invest in our future, protect Medicare and Social Security, we've got to make tough, balanced choices across the board. And what he's really saying in terms of the most well-off is just that we need a sense of shared sacrifice. We have to make choices in a budget. And you can't ask uh, people to make very difficult choices in terms of Medicare, Medicaid, and spending, and then at the same time suggest that those savings, rather than going to reduce the deficit and the debt, are being used just to afford tax relief to the most fortunate Americans. It's just a matter of, of making sound choices and having a sense of shared sacrifice when you're doing deficit reduction. Are we going to keep the household uh, deduction for interest payments? Are we going to keep the deduction when you itemize for charitable contributions? Are we going to get rid of those? What the president put forward in his budget already is he suggested that we limit the amount of deductibility for those uh, at the higher end so that they're not getting two, three times more than two or three times more than what most middle class families are getting. So I think we do have to look at itemized deductions. And the president said we should look at the type of bipartisan tax reform the Bowles Simpson Commission called for. That suggests that if you reduce those type of tax exemptions, you use that money both to lower tax rates on Americans and to also at the same time try to bring down our deficit. Well, take a look at the, here's something more of the president. That here he is talking about the need to tax more of the rich. Tax the rich more. Let's listen. Some will argue we should not even consider ever, ever raising taxes, even if only on the wealthiest Americans. It's just an article of faith to them. 
I say that at a time when the tax burden on the wealthy is at its lowest level in half a century, the most fortunate among us can afford to pay a little more. I don't need another tax cut. Warren Buffett doesn't need another tax cut. And here's the thing. I believe that most wealthy Americans would agree with me. They want to give back to their country. A country that's done so much for them. It's just Washington hasn't asked them to. Well, what is this? I mean, if you look at the polls, people will say they're wealthy. The millionaires should pay more taxes. But the Republicans in Congress, well, they control the House. They can, that's where the revenue decisions are made. How in the world can the president get this done? Look, what the president's making clear is you need shared sacrifice for shared prosperity. And look, the fact is that 1983, uh, President Reagan, Speaker Tip O'Neill, 1990, uh, the elder President Bush, a Democratic Congress, they came together and did bipartisan deaths reduction plans. And, they, and you do things that are painful across the board, but they all included revenues, and they all asked those who yeah. are most well off to pay a somewhat higher share, not because you want to raise taxes on anybody, but you want to bring down our deficit in a way that involves shared sacrifice. And if you do that right, the whole economy will benefit, and mm. everyone will benefit, and you'll have shared prosperity. Okay, thank you very much, Dean Sperling, from the White House. Let's go down to Republican Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. Will you, let's get to the point of taxes here, will you support a tax increase for any income, any income class, zillionaires, millionaires, billionaires, anybody? Yes I do no? not support tax increases. We have for many any of our small group. businesses. For any income group. Our small businesses are telling us, that, and most of these, uh, Chris, file on individual income tax forms. And our right. small businesses, 90% of the employers in this country, are telling us to do not raise our taxes. We can't afford it. The of uncertainty of regulation, the heavy hand. We're trying to create jobs. And if right. you look at the small business numbers, about 70% of the jobs we've created created okay. over the past decade have come from small businesses. So, no, you don't want to tax those small businesses. So let me ask you about billionaires, trillionaires, whatever. Anybody that makes millions of dollars a year, should they pay? I'm just wondering how we're ever going to balance the budget. You can't come up with $1.6 trillion in cuts right now. So in the end, you're going to have to do something with revenues. Why shouldn't the very rich be those people providing those revenues for the government? Chris, you can't what cut enough to balance the budget, can what you? people don't have, uh, Yes, you can. And where, what where are you going to tell me where you're going to cut $1.6 trillion in government spending? Uh, what, uh, what, what the president doesn't seem to understand, Washington does not have a revenue problem. It has a spending I know the, okay, problem. I know we the are in the That's middle of a spending-driven debt crisis. That is a lyric no, to a song, a lyric. Congresswoman. It's a fact. I'm asking you, though. Let me it's ask you for a fact, not a song. How do you reduce the federal deficit by $1.6 trillion? That's the deficit right now by cutting. Give me your cuts for $1.6 trillion. That's how much we're over right now. Let's start with the Ryan budget that is going okay. to hit the floor tomorrow. That is $6.2 trillion in spending reductions over the next decade. Go to the Republican Study Committee budget okay. that is going to be even more of that. And they're listed. You can go to my website, blackburn.house.gov. Okay. Will you vote you for it? Follow the links. They're there. Am I Will voting vote for, for the, the Ryan, Ryan budget? budget? Yes, I'm going to vote for the Ryan budget, and I'm going to vote for the Republican Study Committee budget, too. It is time that we get this country okay. on the road to fiscal health. What are we going to do? Way to do okay. it. Let's talk about the two big issues. Let's talk about Medicare and defense. Medicare, everybody knows that's driving the budget. Let me ask you this right now. Can we tell seniors that instead of paying for their health benefits, which we do now, the federal government does, uh, does now under Medicare, that we're going to give them a check, which will pay por a portion of their medical costs, and then they have to go out and find an insurance company to insure them? Do you think that's a good idea? That's the right idea. Is that I a good think idea? That what we have, what we have in the Ryan budget, where seniors have more options, more uh, things that are sing more similar, more familiar to them uh, via Medicare Advantage. What you're going to see is more options for seniors, but these won't kick in until you get to I think it's 2021. Oh. So people that are under. 
55, 54 years old are right. going to see a change, and it will be uh, What's the option? They're to told the there's Medicare no more Medicare. Advantage program. But you say they have an option, but they don't have an option of keeping Medicare, as it is. They don't have that and option they, under their own plan. They have an option of expanding the coverage that they have. Talk to people that are in the Medicare Advantage program. It works. No, no. Uh, they're happy with okay. it. They like having the, okay. the opportunity to have this a premium support. This is where we support. go into a circle. I respect you, Congresswoman. You've been elected so many times, and you're great to come on the show. But here's the problem. The reason the reason Medicare was passed in the 60s is because the private sector wasn't providing medical care for people. And there's, once you reach your 70s and 80s, nobody's going to bet on you having great health. They know it's going to be expensive. You're going to be making a lot of costs for that company. So the government has to pay it. That's why people have Medicare, why they like it. You're saying a private company is going to go out and insure somebody in their 70s and 80s against not having big medical costs? They're going to think that's a good investment? I, Chris, I've got to tell you, uh, as we have talked with our near seniors and with seniors, those that have more options like having more options. They will sure. tell you that. But the Ryan budget does not touch those that are seniors and yeah. near seniors. It moves back down. Remember, Medicare is a program that has been coming. That money has been coming out of your paycheck. The government has first right of refusal on your that. paycheck. What we want to do is preserve the the program. The way you do that is to move back down the the age uh, tables a little bit, and then say, "Let's look at options and give you more options." And do I think it's going to work? Yes, I do. Did the prescription drug benefit program come in under budget? Yes, it did. Have seniors responded and have insurance companies responded to the opportunity to provide seniors okay. with more options? Yes, indeed they have. And I think that what we need to do is realize that cutting what the federal government spends, beginning okay. to make some serious decisions and have some adult conversations needs to be done. And for the future of my two grandsons, I'm willing to have those conversations. Okay. I bet I'm you I'm worried about I keep asking people people of both parties, including yours, how do you get rid of a $1.6 trillion deficit you right now? Spending. And I get answers that have nowhere near come through with the money. The money is I've nowhere near even... I've just given you two. I've just it, given you two. It's not $1.6 trillion this year. Well, it just the isn't. Ryan budget comes into primary ballot in It doesn't kick in until people turn 55 at some point down. the Republican Study right. Committee budget comes into primary balance okay. in 2014. Great country song, Gwen Yuna's whole stop digging, and that's exactly okay. what the U.S. House of Representatives needs to do. Okay, thank you very much. Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn. Chris.